Okay, so what's Java? Or better yet, why is Java? Well, to understand that, we first need to understand machines. And uh, what's a machine? Well, it's, we're not talking about your robot or your toaster, if you have a robot. What we're really talking about is, um, well, your computer. But not only your computer, but the operating system that's running on it, whatever that is, and the drivers that control your keyboard and your floppy drive and your file system. That whole thing is what we really refer to when we say a machine. So here's a shocker. Your machine does speak a language, but it's called machine language, and it's awful. If you had to speak it, it would cause you to bash your head in a lot like this guy. So in order to make things easier for ourselves, we tried creating what we call first generation languages like assembly language. And this allowed us to type it out the way we wanted and then we would send it to this thing called an assembler who would convert it to this awful language that we didn't want to speak. And then the computer would understand us. But this has its downsides, as you could imagine. For starters, the, the language is not that easy to learn and it takes an inordinate amount of code just to cause one simple thing to happen, like you know, putting Hello World on the screen. So in order to resolve this, we created what was called second generation languages. And these were more elegant. These allowed us to create things in a more human readable form. And then we used this thing called a compiler. And the compiler would turn around and end up creating the assembly language for us. Then it would send that to the assembler who would convert that to machine code and then tell the computer what to do. So this had an, its own catch-22 as well. So let's say you're on a x86 processor, you write a program, you want to share it with uh, your friend who has a power PC, but when she tries to run it, she'll end up getting an exception and it won't run. Well, why is that? Well, it turns out that the assembly language that it uses differs by what kind of processor you're on. So your friend would really have to take your source code and recompile it on her computer in order to actually see it work. So this gave some people some ideas. What if they created, I don't know, what, what they call a virtual machine and they let it run on the machine? Then they could create their own bytecode language that could be interpreted by these guys. And these guys would figure out how to assemble it into the machine language that it was supposed to be. And this brought up even cooler concepts, like now the human readable version of this language could be anything that we wanted it to be. As long as it's still compiled down to this universal bytecode, it could still be interpreted by the virtual machine. And we call these third generation languages. And this one up here, by the way, is Java. Down there is Groovy, Clojure, and Scala, by the way, in case you were curious. So now I could write whatever program I wanted, compile it, package it up, send it over to my friend, and she could just run it. She wouldn't need to compile it. She wouldn't need my source code or anything else in order to make it work. We call this write once, run anywhere. So Java, Scholarly, Groovy, and Clojure, as you just saw, run on what we call the Java virtual machine, the JVM. It's still the same thing. It's what takes the Java bytecode and allows you to run it on your computer. So you may ask, did I really need to know any of this? And the answer is, well, some of it you did, but not really. Here's the important parts. You have to have Java to run a Java application. You can use any OS processor machine you want, and it should run on any machine afterwards, regardless of what it is. And that's pretty much the scoop. Thanks for watching.